Today we will be learning about two things. The first part is trig bashing. Maybe you have seen this before or done this before in certain geometry problems. And the second one is a more interesting configuration known as the pentagon. We will use a single problem to do both of these things. This is from our Math Olympiad program. We discuss this problem in our problem solving class, which happens five days a week. So this is from RMO 2000. And um, the problem is like this, that you have a segment AC. And there is a point B somewhere in between A and C. So it, it is not given where the point B is. It can be anywhere in between A and C. Now we draw three triangles. The first triangle is APB. The second triangle is BQC. And the third triangle is ARC. Now, all of these triangles are very specific. They are isosceles and the angle at the top is 120 degree. So, this angle here is 120 degree. These two sides are equal. Similarly, this angle here is 120 degree and these two sides are equal and finally this angle is 120 degree and these two sides are equal so that's what's given now our goal is to prove that p q r is isosceles so let me join that P, Q, R is, uh, in fact, equilateral, I'm sorry. P, Q, R is equilateral. So how do we go about doing this? I will use the first method of trig bashing, which will be the most natural method of doing this problem. We will be showing that these three side lengths are of equal length and thereby proving that it's equilateral. It's quite simple actually. Uh, the strategy is this that suppose AC is equals to 1. So we can always assume AC to be of length 1 because then we can scale it and we can get any other length. Assume that AB is X then BC is 1 minus X, right? BC is 1 minus X. Now, if you look at the triangle APB, let's zoom it and bring it here, APB. Let's draw it here. This length is X right here. And this angle is 120 degree. It's given that it's an isosceles triangle. So you can easily find out the length of the sides. So this is a triangle PAB. So how can you do that? Well, we can, for example, drop a perpendicular from P. So this length is X by 2. The length AM. Let's call this point M. So we can now say what is the length of AP because this angle is 60 degree. This is 30 degree. It's an isosceles triangle. So the perpendicular bisector of the base will also bisect the angle at the top. So for example, we can say that AM over AP is equals to cosine of 30 degree. So cosine of 30 degree is square root of 3 over 2. 
and a m is x by 2 so x by 2 by a p x by 2 by a p so a p is what we want to find out is equal to square root of 3 over 2 so the length of a p is x by square root of 3 so you can easily find out the length of a p which is x by square root of 3 using this little trigonometric bashing okay so let's make the make a little bit more room so we know that the length of a p is x by square root of 3 so a length of b p is also x by square root of 3 in fact, you can use the same principle. This is 1 minus x. So instead of x, the base is 1 minus x. So now this, this is 1 minus x by square root of 3. And this is 1 minus x by square root of 3. And finally, this total length is 1. So each of these sides would be 1 over square root of 3 and 1 over square root of 3. That's what we found, right? Whatever the base is, you divide that by square root of 3 to get the side length if the angle is 120 degree. So that's what we did. So we have all these side lengths. Now we can use cosine rule in these three pieces of triangle. So I'll tell you what, what that means. So this angle, first notice that this angle is simply 60 degree. This is 30 degree because it's a 120 the top angle is 120 and it's an isosceles triangle and similarly this one is 120 so this is 30 and this is 30 it's 30 degree so in total this angle is 60 degree so we have a triangle which with angle 60 degree as the corner angle like this and this is P A R and this angle is 60 degree this is X over square root of 3 and this is 1 over square root of 3 and we know exactly how to find out the third side of a triangle if given two sides and the included angle that's the cosine rule right so let's use the cosine rule here the cosine rule is this if you have forgotten it let me remind you that that if you have a triangle with a b c and this angle is angle a of course then what you can do is you can find out BC like AB square plus AC square minus 2 times AB times AC times cosine of angle A. That's the formula. So we can use this formula directly in this particular problem. N notice what we just did. We expressed BC, the third side, in terms of the two sides AB and AC and the angle in between so we can do that in the case of this particular triangle so let's do it so it is pr square that's what we want to find out pr square is equal to x by square root of 3 whole square plus 1 by square root of 3 whole square minus 2 times x by square root of 3, 1 by square root of 3, cosine of 60 degree. This is the value of PR square. And you can simplify this. Cosine of 60 degree is half. So this is this will cancel off. So what we will have is PR square is equal to x square by 3 plus 1 over 3 minus x over 3 
So we found PR square looking at this particular triangle. Similarly, looking at this triangle, you can also get QR square. And looking at this little triangle, you can get PQ square. By the way, can you tell me in the comment, what is the value of angle PBQ? It's very simple. Tell me in the comment, what is the value of angle PBQ? Okay, so now using trigonometry, we found the value of PR square, QR square and PQ square. And you can check that all of them will be exactly equal to this expression. Which would mean that these three sides of the triangle, these three sides of the triangle are equal in length. Okay, great. So we have this... Um, trig bashing method. Now in the next video I will be talking about the pentagon method because it's very important to do this without trigonometry as well and there is a very powerful configuration which appears in many trigonometry problems and many geometry problems. It's called the pentagon configuration. We discuss it in detail in our Math Olympiad program but I will Tell you a little bit about it in the next video and how can you use this pentagon for configuration to solve this problem using geometry okay without using trigonometry so it will be fun i'll see you in the next video till then keep on doing great mathematics take care